Welcome to our lecture online. Here's our first example of how to use the nodal analysis method to solve a circuit like this. All we have to do is find the voltage at the node, giving an input voltage, the source voltage here, and we have also a source, a source current within the circuit. So how do we do that? Well, we take our node right here, we find all the currents entering the node, all the currents leaving the node, and then we set, of course, set those equal to zero. So to find the current leading into the node from the voltage source right here, we have to take the voltage difference between these two and divide it by the impedance between them. So the current leading in is going to be V of the source minus V at the node divided by the impedance, in this case it would be 40, plus J20. And that has to equal all the currents leaving that node. Now the first current is easy, we have the source current right here, so that would be equal to I sub S, or 6 times the, or I should say 6 amps with a phase angle of 30 degrees. And then we have these two currents flowing through these two branches right here. So the difference between this point right here and this point right here would be the voltage at the node. And then of course we have this connected to a ground, so the difference is V. So we have plus V divided by minus J30. And then we have plus V divided by a 50 ohm resistor. So this is the current going into the branch, these are the three currents leaving the branch. And now all we have to do is solve this for V. Well, it's not just all we have to do, there's a lot of work to get V, so we have to be careful here. The way we're going to do that is somehow get all the terms with the V on one side of the equation, all the terms without a V on the other side of the equation. So let's first replace the source voltage by 120 at an angle of minus 50 degrees. So I have 120 with a phase angle of minus 15 and uh, minus V divided by, now let's convert that to a magnitude and phase angle. So we have, uh, that's 2000, so take the square root of 2000, we get 44.72. Here. So we have uh, 44.72 with a phase angle of 20 divided by 40 is 0 0.5, so the inverse tangent of 0 0.5 is 26.57 degrees. So 26.57 degrees. All right, on the right side, so we already have this as 6 with a phase angle of 30 degrees. And here, let's see here. Hmm. What we're going to do is we're going to bring this to the numerator. So this will be plus uh, minus J30 in the denominator becomes a plus J, and of course, 1 divided by 30. Hmm. So that would be uh, 1 divided by 30. We, whoop, 1, 1 divided by 30 is a 0 0.0333. And the minus J becomes a plus J up here, so we have V multiply times a j times 0 0.33, oh, I forgot a zero, we need one zero in here, so 0 0.33, that's good enough, and then plus, bring this to the numerator, that would be uh, v multiplied times a 0 0.02. All right, so now we still need to solve for this, so we're going to bring this to the right side, leave this on the left side, on the left side we end up with 120, with a phase angle of minus 15 degrees, divided by 44.72 with a phase angle of 26.57 degrees. So we separate that into two separate fractions. And then we have a minus V over this, which can go to the other side. And this can come to the left side. So this is minus 6 with a phase angle of 30 degrees is equal to bringing this to the other side becomes a plus. So we have a V divided by 44.72 with a phase angle of 26.57 degrees. And then we have plus V times J 0 0.033 and plus V times 0 0.02. <clears throat> so you can see how we've separated the variables. We had V on the right side, everything else on the left side. So now we need to convert this into, we want to bring this to the numerator. And we want to simplify this, so we're going to solve this first. Let's do that. So we have 120 divided by 44.72. That gives us 
2.68, 2.68 in the numerator with a phase angle of 15 and 26, that would be 41 minus 41.57 degrees, and that is minus 6 with a phase angle of 30 degrees, and over here this is equal to, uh, we're going to factor out a V, and then we have left of 44.72 so 44.72, take the inverse of that, that gives us 0 0.022, 0 0.022, and move the angle to the numerator, that of course becomes a negative angle of minus 26.57 degrees, plus J. All right, so now that we factor out a V, notice that we'll still have to put this into the real and imaginary part format so we can add up those terms right there, and here, what we need to do here is also convert this into a real and imaginary part, so we can also do the addition on the left side as well. So you can see here that 2.68, 2.68, uh, well, actually, I'm going to take the cosine of 41.57, take the cosine of that, and then multiply that times 2.68. That gives us ooh, almost exactly 2. So that gives us a... 2.01, and that would be minus j, 41.57, take the sine of that, multiply times 2.68, that gives us 1.78. Notice how we converted this into the real and imaginary parts, we'll have to do the same over there, but with the minus 6 we have to be a little bit careful, because if we draw a little phase angle real quick, you'll see that. So we have a plus 6 with a phase angle of 30 degrees, so that would be uh, like right here. So that would be 30 degrees in this direction, let's say that's a magnitude of 6. A minus 6, of course, is in the opposite direction right here. That means that the real part will be negative, the imaginary part will be negative as well on this, so we have to be careful. All right, so first of all, we take the angle of 30 degrees, we take the uh, cosine of that, well, be careful, yeah, we have the cosine of that, so the cosine of 30, and we multiply times 6, that's a 5.20, but notice that would be positive if we have a positive angle with a positive magnitude, we have a negative magnitude, so that's going to give us a negative real part of minus 5.20. And then for the imaginary part, notice the imaginary part, will be negative as well. So we take the sine of 30, that would be 0.5, so that would be a minus J3. On the right side, we have to do the same thing, so this is equal to V times, on the right side we have to do the same thing over there. So we have uh, 26.57 degrees, we take the cosine of that and multiply that times 0 0.022, and we get 0 0.0 Two zero. Well, I'm going to keep one extra significant figure, so it's going to be zero point zero. Yeah, we'll just do it as two zero. All right, we don't have to be extremely accurate on that. And then for the imaginary part, it's going to be minus j twenty six point five seven. Take the sine of that times point zero two two. We get. Uh, let's see here. That's a zero point. Zero, zero, one, I believe. Oh, no, no, that's going to be 10. There we go. Let's make that into 10 here. There we go. That's better. So round it off to that. We still have the plus J, 0 0.033, and a plus 0 0.02. So now you can see where this is all going. We've separated the variable. We got V on the right side. We factor out of V. Now we have to take everything and 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 transform it into the real and imaginary parts. On the right side, we did exactly the same on the left side, transform everything into the real and imaginary part, because that way we can add them together, then we can reconvert and divide the left side by the right side right here to calculate V. Okay, so now we're going to move up here. And on the left side, we're going to add the real part, so 2.01 minus 5.20, that gives us minus 3.19. So we have minus 3.19 on the left side, and on the imaginary part, uh, let's see here, minus, minus, that would be minus 4.78J. So 
So minus j times 4.78, okay? And that's going to be equal to v times, now we're going to add up all the right side. Okay, for the real part, we have a 0 0.02 and a 0 0.02, that's 0 0.04. So we have 0 0.040, and on the imaginary part, this is bigger than that, so we get a positive plus j times 0 0.03 minus 1, that's 0.023. So now you can see that we can easily now solve for v. The next thing we do is we have v is equal to the left side, which is a minus, I'm going to take the minus out, we get 3.19 with a phase angle, or, or we're not ready yet to do a phase angle, plus j times 4.78. And on the denominator, we get 0 0.040 plus j 0 0.023. All right, we're almost there. So now we have to reconvert back to magnitude and phase angle. I made it easier by removing the negative or factor out the negative. So we have v is equal to, in the numerator, we get 3.19 squared plus 4.78 squared. Take the square root of that, we get 5.75. We have 5.75, and then we take the negative and put it in front with a phase angle of, <clears throat> we have 4.78 divided by 3.19. That gives us, the inverse tangent of that gives us 56.28 degrees. And in the denominator, we get, 0 0.04 squared plus 0 0.023 squared. Take the square root of that, and we get 0 0.046. With a phase angle of 0 0.023 divided by 0 0.04, that gives us an inverse tangent of that, 29.90 degrees. All right, now all we have to do is divide the denominator into the numerator, and we're all set. So let's do that. So we have v is equal to, I'm going to keep the negative sign, 5.75 divided by 0 0.046 equals 125 volts. And we have a phase angle of 56.28 minus 29.9 gives a phase angle of 26.38 degrees. But now we still have this negative in here. So there's one thing we can do. We can add 180 degrees or subtract 180 degrees. So in other words, the voltage is equal to a positive 125 volts with a phase angle of add 180 to this. That gives us 206.38 degrees. Or we say that voltage is equal to 125 with a phase angle of, subtract 180 from that, so we have 26.38 minus 180 gives us minus 153.6 degrees. So either one of those will give you the correct answer for the voltage at the node. So summarizing, what did we do? We used the mesh analysis, or I should say not the mesh analysis, but the nodal analysis. And we have the current going into the node right here at V. So it's the difference in the voltages divided by the impedance. And then we have three currents leaving the node, the current right here, which is I sub S. And then these two currents, which is the voltage difference between V and ground, which is V divided by the impedance on those two branches. Then we have to do the right conversion. First, we need to convert into the magnitude and phase angle format so we can then move those terms into the numerator same thing over here and then we convert that into the real and imaginary part so we can do the adding and then finally we separate v from everything else then we reconvert from the real and imaginary part back into the magnitude and phase angle part so we can do the division and finally we have the final voltage and that's how it's done